Hi, I'm Dr. Johnson Haas, and welcome to Earth Parts, a free educational netcast bringing geology to all. Sometimes people have strange notions of what the interior of the Earth is like. Famously, Jules Verne imagined that you could simply walk down, down, down through caverns, naturally occurring into miles, tens of miles beneath the Earth's surface, which you can't, obviously. People don't sometimes understand the basics of how rocks behave, how they function, what rock types even are. You can't walk to the center of the Earth in a cave because caves occur in limestone, usually, and limestone formations are sedimentary formations that are flat-lying, and they don't delve down into the granite beneath them in any way. These are basic facts of how rock types behave and become each other on our planet. And that's what I want to talk about in this episode. I want to introduce the idea of the basic rock types, igneous, metamorphic, sedimentary, and how they change into each other, how the rock cycle works. So in this episode, I want to talk about that kind of thing. So let's get started. And we're going to start with magma. Magma is molten rock within the earth that hasn't erupted at the surface in a volcano. And it is the source, original source, of the rock that makes up the continents of our world. Magma begins when you have heat flow up through the mantle that produces a partial melt of very shallow rocks. And so this partial melt essentially gets squeezed by the rock into magma chambers. And because it's lighter than the rock around it, it's squeezed upwards by buoyancy. And that's why you have things like magma chambers that come up through the crust and may crystallize in place inside the crust without ever erupting, or erupt at the surface as a volcano, forming igneous rock. Igneous rock that is formed from the cooling and freezing solid of what was originally molten magma or lava. And those are geological terms that have specific meanings. Lava is molten rock from below that erupts at the Earth's surface. When it breaks out into the surface air, it is lava. If it never erupts, if it stays within the Earth and solidifies, freezes solid before it breaches the Earth's surface, then it is considered to be magma. Once magma or lava solidify, either at the surface of the Earth or, in the case of magma, deep within the Earth's crust, once that magma or lava solidifies, it forms igneous rock. There are a lot of different kinds of igneous rocks, and I'm going to talk about that in a separate episode. For now, I want to focus on what happens to the different rock types and how do you get from one to another. Because once you form igneous rock, if it's exposed at the Earth's surface, for example, as lava flows, then it's going to be subject to weathering. It's going to be subject to rain, wind, freeze-thaw processes, all of which are going to mechanically start destroying the rock bit by bit, taking it apart, physically weathering it into bits and grains that are washed or blown or transported by rivers downstream, down the wind direction, and out to sea in many cases where they can collect on the seabed. So that brings us into the concept of sediment and sedimentary rock which is one of the other basic rock types. Sediments are transported by various processes, which again, I'll talk about in detail in a different episode. But when they're transported and they come to rest and pile up somewhere, if that process keeps continuing over geologic time, you're going to pile up layer after layer of sediment that will essentially weigh down the material beneath it and crush it to where the deep material starts to compact. Over time, sedimentary layers can get buried deeper and deeper, and as that happens, they get compacted into harder rock. Sand becomes sandstone. Silt becomes siltstone. Essentially what's happening is the pressure inside the crust can be sufficient to push all the spaces out between the grains, essentially grinding them and forcing them together until they fit and they stick. There's also other processes involved too, Fluids moving through the rock can help precipitate minerals that will solidify and cement the sediment into sedimentary rock. But a lot, and a lot can happen to that. But that's how you form this second group of rocks, the second major group, sedimentary rock. And some forms of sedimentary rock form not by the transport of weathered, eroded bits and grains from some other pre-existing rock. There are some sediments that form by accumulation of particles from other origins. For example, limestone is made by the accumulation of billions of tiny shells of plankton and other organisms living in the ocean. Each individual organism lays down its shell of calcium carbonate, and then as it dies, it may rot away, but the shell falls to the bottom and accumulates as a kind of sediment. It's not eroded from somewhere else. It's formed in the water column, but it does fall and it accumulates. Similarly, coal is a kind of sedimentary rock because it may be a black 
solid residue now, but it started as the accumulation of plant remains. Bits of tree, leaf, peat moss. It started out as the accumulation of something, and that's what makes it a sediment. Similarly, rock salt is a kind of sediment. It doesn't get transported from somewhere else. It's not produced by organism shells. It happens because sometimes in, say, a restricted estuary environment, an arm of the ocean surrounded by land in a hot, arid climate is going to evaporate water fast enough that it actually starts laying down layers of salt on the bottom. And that's how you build up what we call evaporite deposits, which are a kind of sedimentary rock. Again, not transported from elsewhere, not produced by biology, but accumulating nonetheless as salt particles form in the water and fall to the bottom, settling into a layer. That's how sedimentary rock forms. Consequently, sedimentary rock is typically flat-lying when it forms. It forms broad, flat layers of sediment that compact down into rock. And those layers tell us a lot about Earth's history, record fossils, environmental information about the past's climate, and a wealth of other information that we can use to understand Earth's history. Metamorphic rock makes up the third of the major classification types of rock. And metamorphic rock is a difficult thing to describe because it involves, its formation involves processes that don't happen at Earth's surface. Metamorphism is the changing of one rock type into another as a result of heat and or pressure deep in the Earth. It doesn't happen at the surface, that's why we never see it directly. And it takes millions of years to happen. To make metamorphic rock, you can start with any other rock type. You can start with a sedimentary rock, an igneous rock, or even another form of metamorphic rock. Typically, let's say, if you're burying sediments at depth, if you keep burying them deep enough and they get compacted down far enough in the crust, just the heat of being buried that deeply and the pressure of the rock above you will create conditions that are very different from the conditions in which most rocks form. As a result, the heat and the pressure actually causes chemical reactions to occur in the rock, recrystallizing it, changing its mineral composition. Not necessarily changing what atoms are in the rock, that can happen too, but in many cases a metamorphic rock can form without gaining or losing much mass at all. In which case, it is the same mass of atoms, but rearranged into new forms, into new minerals that are stable at those conditions. It might help to think of this in terms of something more familiar, like dough. You make dough up out of a number of basic ingredients, and once it's ready, you put it in the oven. It's the heat that actually does the chemical work of changing the dough into cooked bread. Metamorphism can be slow and very progressive. As things are buried deeper and deeper, they go under more pressure, more heat. Metamorphism can proceed until the rock is utterly changed, and you can't even recognize what kind of original parent rock it came from. All metamorphic rocks have parent rock, the rock that was there first. It can be any kind of rock in the world, and it will change under heat and pressure and become something else. Often metamorphic rocks can form as a result of an intrusion. An intrusion of igneous rock, of, of magma from below, coming up from the mantle or the lower crust. A magma body ascending through the crust, melting and burning its way through the rock, is surrounded by relatively cold bedrock. The heat from the magma will bake the rock surrounding it. It will conduct heat into the rock, which may not be hot enough to melt, but it will be hot enough to change it, to drive it to different mineral compositions from the starting mass that are stable under the higher temperature condition. And even after the intrusion cools and becomes solid rock, rock, the metamorphic change has already happened. The rock has been thermally metamorphosed, and the new mineral that are left behind will persist. We call this contact metamorphism, or thermal metamorphism. The rock is coming into contact with a heat source that is forcing it to change. That's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is by forming mountains. Whenever continents collide or mountain ranges rise due to tectonic processes, what's happening inside the core of that mountain is that the rock that was there to begin with is being crumpled and compressed, warped by tectonic forces, and the rock can be stretched and it can fold. And while this is happening, the rock is very hot and it's under a lot of pressure. This is what we call regional metamorphism. An entire region is affected as an entire mountain range is born. So I've introduced three major types of rock, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, and they can all turn into each other. And if I was to show you the rock cycle in this sort of box diagram, I would have to start though with magma. It's not a rock, it's, it's molten, but magma is the source of all continental rock originally, and for that matter, ocean crust rock. On the continents, once you form igneous rock, once it hardens and solidifies, it can weather. It can be weathered and eroded by surface processes, wind, rain, ice, and transport the sedimentary material from the original igneous material down to where it collects to form a sedimentary layer that can compress into rock. Similarly, igneous rock can be 
if tectonic forces push igneous rock down into the depths of the Earth, or it is compressed during a regional metamorphism event, then the igneous rock itself can metamorphose, and you can form metamorphic rock that way. Just like sedimentary rock that's buried deep enough, exposed to heat and pressure, will turn into metamorphic rock. And once you have metamorphic rock, it's like any other rock. It can erode at the surface and actually form sediment by eroding the metamorphic rock into particles that collect to form a new sedimentary layer. If an igneous intrusion comes up through the metamorphic rock, it can metamorphose that rock even more. Metamorphic rock can be further metamorphosed. There are, there are many ways that rocks can become each other. And of course, if they're buried deep enough, if they're pushed far enough down into the crust, they can melt. And if they melt, metamorphic, igneous, or sedimentary rock will all go back to original magma where they came from. That's the rock cycle. Simplified here, but basically just all the ways that different kinds of rock can turn into each other.